uh, some of the players in discussions pointing out that like um, Cyberpunk does not really have that many choices and consequences. And I've seen like people missing out so many things, right? So what we have done in Cyberpunk, we have a lot of the choices and consequences are very subtle. A lot of them are small and a lot of them are actually there, but they are not very much in your face. It's not that the game comes in and tells you, hey, this is a result because you have done this or that before and that's the thing and so on. Point. What I can tell you is that we are watching that, watching your reception learning. Hello YouTube, my name is Shifo and welcome to my channel. Powell Sosko, the lead quest designer of Cyberpunk 2077, has started a series on Twitch where he streams Cyberpunk 2077 from start to finish while giving developer commentary. I will summarize his 3.5 hour streams in 10 minutes. We will cover staging, non-verbal communication, strong poses, and most importantly, we'll be talking about choices and consequences in quests. Let's dive into it. Powell mentions the importance of eyes when they paid close attention to which characters should have gotten augmented eyes. That for example the Romans partners did not receive augmented eyes to keep them human. He noticed how staging takes place in this scene where you as the players are getting funneled to draw your attention to the characters in the world and you will take a conscious action as a gentle reminder from the game to keep looking. Next, he also addresses how important the collaboration with the level designers was, and that the level design has deliberately been set up in this way to create this 1v2 interaction with V, Matteo and Evelyn, with the bar set up as it currently is. In the next section, Paul emphasizes how important it is to keep the characters interacting with the world to keep it alive, demonstrated by Evelyn taking her ashtray with her. And he introduces us to the concept of introducing your characters with strong poses. How Evelyn is keeping a strong pose during the scene, but is also shown as being very nervous with her body language. And how it is not even necessary to add dialogue to her character to transfer this emotion. As you can see with Evelyn walking past us very nervously without telling anything. One of the learning points from CDPR is how to incorporate close-up scenes in a first-person perspective. The way they solve this is by having, for example, characters lean in into V. He mentions that conflict is very interesting for storytelling and how this causes you as a player to observe at what is happening. For the next sections, I'm gonna play the clips of Paul where he addresses cut content and addressing multiple paths and consequences. If you're getting value from your time, don't forget to press on the like button. This will help this video getting pushed to more people and would help me a lot. Thanks. Hmm. Was betraying decks an option you wanted to add to the game but it was cut? Not according to my knowledge. Uh, it is fairly rare when we decide to, uh, you know, uh, decide not to do something that looks as major as this. When you're building a game, you need to be very conscious about where you invest your resources, what you want to do and when you don't, right? Um, and in this specific case, we wanted to build it in a way that you will feel as a, as a player, okay, th this is something that uh, could be dangerous, but I don't know. Uh, and we've been doing this always. We've been doing this in Witcher 2, in Witcher 3, um, you know, and in Cyberpunk has plenty of those situations. Uh, because as a player, you know, when you are playing, let's say, without the help of any walkthroughs or YouTube or whatever, we want you to feel uh, that, you know, like what you're picking, you don't really know, right? You, that you really need to pay attention what is actually very important and what it's not. So this is the way, this is the way how it was done like this here. Um, there's the question, is the pickup the most complex quest player choice-wise in the game? It's a difficult question, actually, because um, when it comes to the number of uh, like different variations, it could be. But when it comes to the actually like the size of the branches, it pr it's prob it probably is not. Sometimes, you know, when you make more ch more branches and uh, more variations, you cannot invest this in another thing. So, for instance, like whole Judy storyline has plenty of choices. Uh, you know, uh, there are choices between, let's say, the pickup and, um, you know, another uh, visit of Maelstrom in the Totten Tans and so on. Um, 
And I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to bring up all the choices here because that's not the thing that I wanted to do. But what I wanted to say is, like, as a designer, you really need to always plan out and be like conscious. Okay, what is the size of the choices that I'm going to do as a player, as a designer? You know, of, of those uh, different variations. Uh, you have like, let's say, enough different versions for the player, but in the same time, those are substantial, you know? And for instance, the pickup is an example of a quest that has lots more versions, but those branches are not that big. They have uh, consequences later, which is great, I think. Uh, but also, like, um, I think the key to success is to uh, mix and match well, you know, choices that are um, for the player, um, that are sometimes, you know, major and sometimes minor. And I think this is the key, you know, the, the way to make it actually correct, you know, to correctly prepare it and so on. Especially, you know, in, in our, in our, because in our games, as you can see, all the scenes and, and, and so on, all those things are actually very expensive, you know. What we are doing is actually very complex. The, the budget for all those scenes, this is not something that is, uh, of course, you know, easy to afford and fast to make. So because of that, we need to be very conscious, you know, how we are planning. And just basically being a quest designer is, is, is partially... You always, when you plan, when you design, you try to triangulate the costs of, the, of what you're preparing in different branches versus the length. Uh, and that's always a choice that you have to make um, as a designer. Powell addresses the importance of budget, how everything needs to be planned perfectly. In my ears, this seems like they were really constrained from the budget and development side to create meaningful quests. You have to understand that there were a lot of technical issues with developing Cyberpunk 2077, so that is why they were not able to go all out with this game. In the following section, Paul addresses the question if there will be more choices and consequences in the future. Really good question. So. Uh Choices and consequences and designing those is, is something that is very, it's unique for RPGs and it's difficult to do because as a designer, you're juggling this uh, dilemma. The dilemma is how much you will give players, how much, how many hours you will give players, you know, to play versus how many paths you will create and how many things you want to create consequences for. And then, and that's the most difficult one, what consequences actually make sense for the player for the players because like i saw like some of the some of the players in discussions pointing out that like um cyberpunk does not really have that many choices and consequences and i've seen like people missing out so many things right like i i tweeted i remember in january when i said like just people didn't discover all the paths because i was like yeah because I'm just watching the Let's Plays, reviews and so on, and people point out some uh, things that are that are not in the game, that are in the game, that are even some things that I did myself. And I'm like, that's just like, uh, that's like completely not true. And I know basically because the game is so complex uh, and has so many different things, but that it's simply not possible for you to some sometimes know everything. So what we have done in Cyberpunk, we have a lot of the choices and consequences are very subtle. A lot of them are small and a lot of them are actually there, but they are not very much in your face. It's not that the game comes in and tells you, hey, this is a result because you have done this or that before and that's the thing and so on. An example of that kind of mechanics is a flashbacks from Witcher 3. When you were uh, doing major choices, there was this moment when we were popping up to the basically a video when Dandelion was narrating and telling you this or that happened because Geralt decided to do this or that, right? This is a very much in your face uh, way to design those things. In Cyberpunk, we have tried to go into a bit more different direction. Uh, we were um, thinking that, okay, our audience is very mature. Our audience is an audience of people who actually really, who play RPGs, know those things. So we will combine choices that are very subtle uh, and, and consequences that are very subtle and con consequences that are obvious, but we won't have these moments when we telegraph, let's say via UI, hey, that's the consequence of the choice you made before, you know? We simply count on your um, skills of observation, what you can see. Now, the question was directly uh, about, are we planning to have more? It's, it's really hard to say at this point, 
like as a designers what we are doing we're watching your reception as players of the game and we're always trying to decide okay you know that was a good decision that wasn't and we are always adapting and you know the the thing is like the feedback that you guys are giving like the tweets you know when you're like tweeting at me or like leaving the tweets under like my i i always see it you know and it's not like sometimes i cannot like answer and tell you like hey yeah we will do more or hey we will do less or hey i will just ignore you like i cannot say that at this point because you know i cannot really declare it at that point what i can tell you is that we are watching that watching your reception learning and that's the same thing like you know um like i know that the a lot of people, when you look at The Witcher 3 at the past, you think uh, uh, there's a lot of um, nostalgia going on, you know, regarding The Witcher. And, you know, don't get me wrong, like, I have gave my heart to The Witcher franchise. Because I spent, I don't know, like, it was six years altogether working on The Witcher games, so Witcher 2, Witcher 3 in both expansions, right? Six years altogether, six and a half. And, and the rest was cyberpunk. And the thing is, we have taken everything that we learned on the uh, in the witcher to cyberpunk and we tried to make it better right no creator ever things like i'm gonna fuck it up that's the plan Th this is what i'm gonna do you know i'm gonna screw it up thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to press the like button if you want to see more content like this don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one thank you bye